Everyone thinks that the NFL players are usually tall, well-built, and muscular, but most of all, completely healthy dudes. But guess what? They might have some serious illnesses too. Despite that, they perform their very best in every game. Today, we're going to tell you 10 NFL players that had physical or mental disabilities. Number 10. Samari Roll Already a veteran during the NFL in 2005, Samari Roll couldn't join the first 10 games of the season. The former All-Pro cornerback had to face many rumors due to his absence. He mentioned in an interview how he had suffered from seizures earlier as well, but the 2007 seizures took a serious toll on his body and mental health as well. It got so bad that he had to publicly talk about his illness and address the rumors as well. Due to the complications caused by the seizures, he couldn't swim, drive, or even keep his own hotel room. That's right, people. In epilepsy, the seizures can be sudden and unexpected, so it is preferred to keep the person between other people, so the situation can be handled by them. The NFL star did make a comeback and played throughout 2008, despite the illness. Epilepsy can be detected by an outsider easily, but what if a player has an illness like Crohn's disease? Moving on to our next NFL star. Number 9. David Garrard Crohn's disease can have symptoms like arthritis, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and rashes, etc., but that didn't stop him from playing the best he could. After playing 12 seasons in the NFL, some with the Jaguars and some with the Dolphins and the Jets, he had to manage his Crohn's disease along with his intense workout routine and games. But when did he find out that he had this illness? Well, in January 2004, a piercing pain in the stomach ended up with David groaning on the floor. Eventually, he had to go through a surgery where a part of his small intestine was removed. After some decent rest, he joined and continued his practices with the Jacksonville Jaguars. The NFL star showed immense gratitude towards God and his faith and his doctors who helped him recover. We've talked about two players with physical illnesses, but what about the mental disabilities that were faced by NFL stars? Number 8. Terry Bradshaw During the team's iconic Steel Curtain era, this player won four glorious Super Bowl titles. He's probably known as a commentator and an analyst now. You might think that having such a successful career means that he's a happy person overall, but here's a twist. He suffered from severe panic attacks before and after the games, and was diagnosed with ADHD and clinical depression right after he got divorced by his third wife. But why would such a rich and famous NFL star get depressed? According to his biography, Keep It Simple, Terry used to drink a lot to cope with his depression and ADHD. The two-time Emmy winner described how he realized that his depression had a strong connection to the criticism directed at him when he was an all-pro quarterback. Terry isn't the only brave NFL star who battled a serious mental illness while playing. Number 7. Charles Haley Haley is one of the greatest defensive players of all time and has the honor of being a 2015 Hall of Fame inductee as well. But guess what? While he was working and practicing hard day and night, he had an undiagnosed bipolar disorder. But the disease didn't stop him from collecting 100 sacks and 500 tackles in 169 games. He faced many hardships during his professional career and an extremely rocky and unpredictable relationship with his coaches and teammates as well, due to his mental disorder. But then again, bipolar disorder wasn't strong enough to stop Charles Haley from becoming the only NFL player with five Super Bowl rings. Haley wasn't the only NFL star who had to manage his bipolar disorder and star career at the same time, though. This brings us to our next star. Number 6. Keith O'Neill The founder of Fourth and Forever Foundation and a well-known NFL star, Keith O'Neill was always known as the moody guy among his friends and family. That kinda is the biggest problem when it comes to mental illness. Whenever people don't understand what's wrong with the person, who's probably mentally ill, they just consider him a moody, rude guy and don't pay much attention. The same thing happened with O'Neill. He had been struggling with anxiety and depression since a young age of 9 years old. In an extremely hard time in terms of both mental health and career, his coach, Tony Dungy, was the one who provided Keith a therapist so he could work his problems out. His official bipolar disorder diagnosis came out in 2010, two years after his retirement. His charitable foundation still plays an important role in spreading information and financially helping research related to the disease. 
Number five. Wait, no, stop. Have you liked and subscribed to our channel? Did you turn on those post notifications? Yeah? Well, that's great. For those of you who didn't, do it right now so we can move on to the next star on our list. Are you done? All right, let's get back. Number five, Mark Schlereth. People who have dyslexia struggle a lot in reading and making sense of written words. And that's pretty much what happened with Mark Schlereth in sixth grade, when his teacher asked him to read in front of the class. The three-time Super Bowl winner didn't let his illness stop him from adopting reading as a hobby. That's right, people. He loved to read whenever he wasn't running and sweating on the field. Even though he learned how to read a little later than other kids his age, he worked hard and passionately enough and made up for it in other departments with his athletic stamina and determination. After a successful career on the field, he continued to work as a sports television and radio personality. As everyone knows, this work required a lot of reading too. And guess what? Mark is, as usual, great at what he does now. But can you imagine a player with no toes? Setting a record for the longest field goal in a regular session game is no joke, especially when the player has no toes on his right foot. The record was of 63 yards, and it was untouchable for 43 years. Surprised? That's right. Our next NFL star is nothing but an absolute legend. Number 4. Tom Dempsey A question for all the football fans. Are you guys familiar with the Tom Dempsey rule? Well, it was named after the legendary player Tom Dempsey. Born without any toes on his right foot, Tom Dempsey made exceptional records, kicked 159 field goals, and had a marvelous 10-year-long NFL career. Doing all this while being disabled isn't a piece of cake. He had to wear a specialized football cleat with an enlarged and flattened front surface to compensate for his disability. Due to protests by fellow players, the Tom Dempsey rule was made. According to this rule, any shoe worn by a player with an artificial limb must have a kicking surface that conforms to that of a normal kicking shoe. Playing for the Saints, the Eagles, the Rams, the Oilers, and the Bills? Tom Dempsey is one of the brightest names of this tough game. Playing without toes is hard, undoubtedly. But what if there was someone who had cancer and still won the Super Bowl ring? That's right. Wait and watch, people. Number 3. Mark Herzlick Ewing sarcoma is a rare kind of bone cancer, and it grows in your bones or the soft tissue around your bones, such as cartilage or the nerves. Now, the intensity of physical and mental damage caused by cancer of any kind isn't really that much of a mystery to anyone. But despite all the hardships, Mark Herzlick had one heck of an NFL career. It wasn't as long as the other players, but having an NFL career while suffering from something as fatal and painful as cancer isn't a small thing either. The all-ACC linebacker for Boston College officially announced his disease at the ripe age of 22. He has also written a book called What It Takes, Fighting for My Life and My Love for the Game. The survival story of the NFL star has undoubtedly inspired many. Chemotherapy is simply painful, but fighting your way out of it to continue your career is something our next NFL player did. Number 2. Eric Berry If you're a fan of football, then you will probably remember the NFL Comeback Player of the Year award winner back in 2016, Eric Berry. The name ring a bell? Diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, Eric Berry made sure no stupid disease hinders his career and routine in any way. Working out and training regularly without any absences while going through chemotherapy pretty much shows Eric's love and dedication for the sport. After being declared cancer-free in 2015, Barry continued his hard yet shining career and is still an inspiration for everyone. The last player on our list played this tough game despite having only one hand and showed tremendous courage and willpower. Surprised? Don't be. Number 1. Shaquem Griffin The star player for the Seattle Seahawks, Shaquem Griffin was born with amniotic band syndrome. Due to this disease, Griffin had to bear terrible pain in his hand in his early life. Later on, he continued to play football in high school, college, and ended up in the Seattle Hawks. In a meeting with another little boy suffering from amniotic band syndrome, he was touched by the similarity in their situations, as the kid had a twin brother to motivate him, just like Shaquem did. That's all for today's video. You've reached the end. Who's your favorite player out of the list? Did we forget to add anyone? Tell us in the comment section down below. That's all, folks.